Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you're all doing well. It's an absolutely beautiful day today. It's probably the best day we've had all year so far, actually. It's, well, it feels like 14, 15 degrees outside, which is brilliant for February. Um, today's job's got the boiler and the cylinder fit on this job. It's actually a warm flow boiler that I'm fitting. I'm not sponsored or anything like that. It's just what's been specified on this particular job. So I'll give you my honest opinions about the boiler and hopefully we'll make a really neat job of it. So yeah, well, I'm not gonna talk for so long because I think the video might be quite long anyway. So we'll crack straight on with it and we'll see how we get on. So I've just unboxed the boiler, panels all lift off. First thing I know, it's condensed trap is at the front. Um, seems okay, obviously, to get to its service. You get your accessory pack with all your bits and bobs. The only thing I'm not probably so keen of is a flexible, I'm assuming that's for the condensed trap. I will have to give the instructions a read because I say I've not fitted one of these before. But first thing, obviously, straight to, straight to copper 28 of the boiler flow. That one we need to get a main line for auto air vent at the top. So pretty standard stuff really. Drain off tap at the bottom, way low burner. So yeah, you can't really say too much. It all looks pretty standard, what you'd expect to see. This is just the heat only version. I think they do do one where it comes with a 10 year warranty where the filter and everything's inside the boiler, but this is just the standard like heat version. I think they do, like obviously they do systems versions, but they do like a, a heat one with a pump inside with no expansion list. So there's a few different models. Uh, but this is just the bog standard one. I'd sooner put my own pump and expansion vessel on because then I know everything's correctly sized. So I'm using rear exit, rear exit flue on mine. So I always like, when I'm doing an oil boil, I always get the fluid one first. But it looks like they give you knockouts for left, right. Um, and obviously these will be the pipe ones. The only ones I'm not sure about yet is condensed. I'm assuming these are for the condensed. So you can take it left or right, which obviously is different to like the Worcester where it goes out the back. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It depends, again, it depends on your start, how you're fitting it and where it's going. Obviously, if you're quite tight for space on the right-hand side and the left-hand side, you don't really want to be coming out the side, do it, be better out the back. But again, every job is different. And the only other thing I've noticed is no valve for the oil line. Um, obviously, we probably have to provide our own. So that's another thing. But we'll see what it's like when we get going. So I've just literally positioned my boiler in position. That's where it's going to sit. You're going to have plenty of room to service this. I know there's a there's a stud wall being built between this point here. So it's literally going to have a set of doors on it. And then obviously unvented cylinder and boiler. So there's plenty of room in front. And I moved that stop tap out the corner just so it was a little bit easier to get to. Um, that flue is going to line up pretty darn well, I would say. I haven't actually had a look at the flue kit, but obviously it'll come with an elbow and then just a standard flue kit. I'll probably have to cut down. These flow returns I can take out the side. These are my flow returns coming across, but I'm going to put pump, expansion vessel, filter, all that sort of giz gizmo on there. Bypass valve and then into my zone valves, pick up the unvented cylinder. So yeah, it's pretty pretty much a standard, standard boiler layout. We're just making it into an S plan, so it should be fine. This is inside the flue, even comes with a terminal guard, which is handy because sometimes you forget to put them on your job. Um, any flue below two metres requires a terminal guard, whether it's gas or oil. Obviously, this is the air duct kit. It's going to take a little bit longer to fit than a water. But again, not being the absolute end of the world. But I'll just have to have a look at the instructions. How's that piece going? That's going to go on top of the boiler, in it? That's the end up. Probably going something like that. Once you've done one, it won't be too bad, but obviously the first one, there's probably another piece that goes in there. So I should always read the instructions. That piece is gonna go on the boiler first. It's gonna, it's gonna, that's probably gonna bolt on there. So I'm gonna read the instructions. That's gonna bolt on there with them little studs they provide. Then that's gonna go in, and then it's just a, it's not telescopic, so we'll have to cut that to length. What's that bit? Oh, that's a clamp or a bracket. Flue thermostat. We'll have to, we definitely have to read the instructions on that bit, but we'll figure it out when we that bad. And I'll get the flue in first, and then we can have a look at the pipe move then. So this just bolts on. It'd been, to be honest, it would have been nice if that had been fitted out the factory, because it, it won't fiddly, but in the winter, when your hands are really cold, the nuts are a little bit small to get on, and the socket doesn't fit very well either. Maybe I'm using the wrong socket. But yeah, it's just stuff like that. It saves a couple of minutes you know, when you're fitting it. All takes time, doesn't it? Just make sure it doesn't track by the insulation. So yeah, that goes on first. I don't know if they provide any. I don't know if they provide any silicon lubricant grease either. But we'll have a look. 
and then we'll get the rest of the flue kit made up. It says you need to put the, the flue stat in. That one doesn't go on there very well. It says you need to put the flue stat in before fitting the flue, so we'll have a look at that bit next. We'll get that done. I have to do this thing with a little spanner because the stud's not straight. So when you put the socket on, it hits the hits the edge of the flue a bit. It's not the end of the world. It'll, it'll, still, it'll be still fine, but we just need to make sure that it's bolted down. Obviously, that's, the flue is critical. There's all the others you can get socket on. I don't know if did you see that stud. It's just flicking into the side a little bit. But again, not the end of the world. Just make sure that one's tight. And then all the others you can get the little ratchet on. That should be fine. That'll be alright. So this flue stat actually goes in that test point where you normally put your analyzer. You've got to put that in the PTFE and then I assume it goes into the flue and then you've got to wire that in onto the burner connection onto the uh, control box. So again a little bit like that. It's probably going to take me 10 minutes to fit. I know it's only 10 minutes but when you're on site it's all time you need a day. So we just have to read the instructions. And then I assume every time you service the boiler, because that's your test point for your analyzer, you have to take that out and put your test point in. So surely they could have put a, another hole in for your analyzer to go in, but obviously not. So you have to put that on the burner, there's just a blanking cover. So put that on with the gasket and then obviously the hose, wherever I've put it, will connect on with the Jubilee kit and then it will connect onto there. Why you have to fit that before Fitting the, um, it won't go that way, it won't go like that. Uh, why I have to fit the flue over each that um, before fitting the flue, I don't know. Because that will just wire into the control box. Again, that's just a bit of a, a bit of a faff. They should have another test point on the side. Because every time you service it, I imagine you've got to take that out or do it outside now. Obviously that's been an afterthought, hasn't it? I'm guessing with this, if you wanted to go left, right, whichever way you wanted to go with your flue, you can use that, it, save, it would save you having to buy an elbow, because unlike the Worcester, if you want to go out the right hand side, you've got to buy an elbow, which is like 58 quid. So it does come with everything you sort of need, you've just got to put more of it together yourself. So that'll just push in there, hose, hose on from the burner onto the side, and then just measure the flue kit through the wall. Obviously I've got, I'll have to make this good with sand and cement, because I thought it was the old Trianco boiler in with a square hole, but at least it, at least it lines up. That's that flue all fitted. It's sort of got a clamp, so the air intake doesn't go all the way through, and that clamp just seals it. So we've still got the the, the tube to put on to the burner, but that's not an issue. So next job is flow return. The only thing I don't like about that flue, and I need to check on this, it says in the instructions you need a non-combustible sleeve where it goes through the wall. Obviously, I haven't put one in yet. That's why I've not made good the, the flue, so I might need to get a metal sleeve. I can't see why they wouldn't send one if you needed to. Obviously, if it was a timber building, you could understand it. But I do need to check with the manufacturer on that, because as I say, I've not fitted one before. And if it does require one, obviously, we'll need to put one in. So I'll leave that. But I wanted, I just always like to get the flue done first on an oil ball. It gets everything lined up so we can see exactly what we're working to. So flow at the back. That's our flow pipe. We're going to put pump. Um... Obviously, we need to put a bypass valve across the return on there as well. Return, that's our bottom one. We need to pick up an expansion vessel, filter into the bypass, uh, and then unvented cylinder. They already came with first fixes. So this is hot at the top. Obviously, hot into the hot into the cylinder. Nice and easy. Bottom one, that 22 is our discharge. So we need composite, we need a lever valve, composite valve, which is which is this thing, we need to obviously keep our D1s nice and close together because we can only have a maximum length of 600 on there and we're easily going to get 300 drop on our D2 uh, so off our temperature pressure relief that one's for the cylinder start um, not sure which one coil feed is, that's probably coal feed but we can blow, blow down the coil anyway so coil flow and return which we need to pick up off these as well so we've got a bit to crack on with um, I'll probably leave the condense till last I might take that behind the boiler and then Eventually, we're going to be going into that drain there. That that hole there needs bricking up yet. As I say, there's a wall going in here. So next job is pipe work from the boiler. We'll start to get some of this tidied up. That's our cold. That was just a temporary. Uh, I just had a temporary feed off there. But hopefully, we should start to get some of this sort of in today. But the unit itself looks looks nice. I think very well. Very similar to all the other boilers on the market. We just um, we'll have to see how long it sort of lasts but I can't see it being a major issue it doesn't look rubbish if that makes sense it looks okay right the connections are nice and easy to 
gets you on it, ball is moving all over. Obviously, if you are going up with your pipe work, you will require, I've just spun that out the well, out the way. You will require a auto air vent or something, but all our pipe work is going to rise up anyway and we'll be able to bleed it through the upstairs rads. So that's not an issue. What I'm going to do is use these knockouts here, I think. I don't know, actually. I might use that one for the return and put the filter there. I'll have a think about it. I'm never 100% sure on still sort of, sort of get get going. It's just sort of thinking in progress to square that boiler back up. Um, but yeah, it's nice that you can spin that out of the way, do all your connections, and then we can connect the hose on last then. That's a good little thing. Absolutely love my Millwall. And jobs like these, where you up and down the pipe sizes, it's fantastic. To be honest, this battery, how long have we been on this job? It's down to one star. But that battery's probably lasted like a week. I know I'm not using it all the time, but I've done all the copper first sticks. If you look back on my other videos, I've done all this and it's not, I've not charged the battery yet. So that four amp. I used to have the two amp ones. I think they were. And they used to, you only used to last like a day, but that's brilliant, that battery. And the cup's good as well. So just getting this return connected in, I just use a pipe shroud on the boiler and then we can start to look at all the other parts. All this is going to be lagged yet as well. So I never bother with like steel walling anything up because there's literally no point in the lagging or lagging or cover it. Right, I'll try and do this bit without the phone ringing. I've, I've done this twice already, but it won't stop ringing this morning. Um, they've just connected out the boiler. We've got a filter. Any air we should be able to bleed out there on the return. Next thing we're going to do is put our pump in. Then we need a bypass valve onto the return. So that's my next little project. Uh, we'll probably just cut it in here anywhere. It'll be fine. It'll be nice and easy to get to. The electrician's got plenty of room to flex it up then to keep it on the top. Um, so yeah, boiler's all sat in. Pump. And then we just... Well, I could take the expansion vessel off. That will turn on. Thinking... Mount my expansion vessels, my potable one, and the heating one up there. So out the way then, and then we'll just get a full loop across there as well, somehow. But it's just trying to keep everything neat and tidy, um, spaced out so it's easy to work on. And yeah, th trying to think about the next person as much as I can, really. And then it should be fine. Right, I haven't filmed this on my phone because the GoPro, I think the fluorescent tube that we've got in the room, the light, is at the same frame rate and it's just flipping all over the place. So the quality will be a little bit poor or less than what I normally do. I can't find my pencil. So all I'm doing, I've got one of these Dab Evo uh, pumps. So we'll just cut, cut that out. I just realised I've used my pipe slice as a camera prop. <laughs> that was good planning, wasn't it? That. Good planning. Got all the mod cons. Got all the mod cons. So when it looks like I'm, you can't see anywhere. What the hell am I doing? So just turn in the pump up. I'll probably have to this out. I am tightening that, but it looks like I'm loosening it because it splits. And again, just pump tightening in. So it's just one of the. The Dab Evo, I prefer these over the Grumfoss now. I've had a few issues with the, like the newer generation Grumfoss pumps. So that'll go there somewhere, nice and easy to work on. I've left the plug for it inside the boiler so that we can just wire that straight up into the, well, it would be a new wiring centre program and everything. We're not using that one. And next thing again is bypass valve then. So pump and then into the bypass before the zone valves, because if these zone valves short, it'll just push the water into the return. I'm actually going to set my composite valve up next for my unvented cylinder. I call these composite valves, all they are is a three bar pressure reduction valve, 
you've got a filter in there as well and a single check valve you've got a that's you balance cold feed if you want to use it you've got a six bar there you've got four and a half bar on this one four and a half bar pressure relief and you can use that one for your expansion because it's on that side of the check valve don't use that one for your expansion as my mate did at college and he still passed because that's how the college showed him how to do it which is completely wrong so above these i always like to keep these above the height of the cylinder so that's my drop down back into my cylinder i'm gonna put a lever valve up here then into that and then we can take the expansion off there or we can put a t in however we want to do it so that's going to fit something like that if you put them above the height of the cylinder it just makes it easier to work on um and then we, it keeps these distances generally in check because you can only have a maximum of 600 mil before you turn this so we'll, we'll end up with a t here a short short piece here teeing into that one and then the turn dish will sit here and then we've got our minimum 300 mil drop we'll probably do that with a pull bend as well into our into our d2 discharge which is that bottom one that bottom 22 mil one that is dropping to the outside so it literally run across there and then we just need to terminate as per g3 regulations on the outside uh, which that's how you've got to do it in our country um so yeah we'll crack on with that i think get that done and then we'll have to start having a look at the flow and return connections cold feed and stuff and get this cylinder piped in hot drawer off i'll probably just come up with a pull bend and then just a soldered connection onto that feed that i've left off so nice and easy and these cylinders they do send you all uh, compression sockets and stuff. I'm not sure what make it is. Uh, it's, oh, it's an ideal. It doesn't really matter. It's just an unvented cylinder. This is what I was on about with the discharges. Sometimes this will say 500 mil on this particular cylinder. It says 600 mil. It just it doesn't. It's not really going to matter too much. Uh, but always keep it falling, obviously, into your tun dish and keep it keep it to 500. Some books it say 500. Some books it will say 600. I don't think anybody will ever really pick you up. But it's it's your D two that you will get picked up on. Obviously, if, you, if your D1 was like two metres or something ridiculous, you'd probably get picked up, but you're not going to get picked up on between 500 and 600. But try and keep it as short as possible anyway. Always, you can't go wrong if you go to the manufacturer's instructions. Depends on which book you've got. Some of the books I've got say 500, some say 600. But yeah, keep it as short as possible and obviously drop in. If We're going to be absolutely perfect on this one though. We'll just put a, a lever valve on there so it's nice and easy to get to. These valves are good as well because you can, they're all RAS approved and they are gas rated as well. So you can take that red handle off and you've got a gas rated lever valve as well, all on one. Perfect. Um, so yeah, we're getting there. All right, I'll show you some of these. Right, this is how I like to do them. So I do it like that, 50, obviously 15 mil drain off, then into that washing machine valve and I blank them off. Just makes it so much easier for draining down obviously traditional way is that i went to a job the other day it's story time i went to a job the other day and the legionella guy pulled the lagging off it was a commercial building and it was a 22 22 t with a press fit reducer into a drain up and he picked that up because obviously it's, it's technically a dead leg because the length of pipe is too long that is not a dead leg but obviously I needed to change it, so I had to drain the whole lot down, the whole cylinder, it was like a 300 litre cylinder, and I had to put a 22-22-15T on. I'm still going to continue to do them like that, because there is no risk of contamination from that little bit there. Dead leg is a part of the system that's not being used, that's being used for flushing. So that's how I'm doing them. I, don't, I can't obviously talk for the people how you do them, you can do them like that. That, if anybody comes to that cylinder when that's just blanked off, you can screw a hose pipe attachment straight on there and drain the cylinder down. It just makes life easy. I'm not one for struggling, so that's how I do them, right or wrong. So they're doing it wrong to make it easier. I don't think it's wrong anyway. I say, if you ever come to drain down the cylinder or ever the next person is, they'll thank me for this one. They'll thank me for it.
the old socket m and f trick at the top so yeah all i'm going to do is put that once it's cooled down on there and say the lagging will co cover my rubbish shoulder and this isn't instagram it'd be perfect i'll clean that up anyway and then that is all in there you look much better now isn't it much better we can be proud of that joint still looks a mess <laughs> it's fine one thing for sure that that, that shouldn't leak the old socket MNF trick at the bottom because I've cut my pipe short. But again, lagging will cover that. That's my excuse for everything. I do blank these off, but I also leave a, a connection. So that will just screw straight on there. It's got the rubber washer in. So you can literally, if you want to drain it down, obviously you can crack that straight away. It just makes life so easy. Still got room to get a hose on the bottom. You've got what? You've got a good four inches there. So that's perfect. That's how I like to do them. If you want to pick me up, because that's a dead leg. I'll stand there and I'll give you the order and say it isn't. It just makes life easy. I always put a gate valve on my primary return. It's the only thing I use gate valves for in plumbing. What that does, obviously you can balance that down because that won't need full flow through that coil. So if the heating and hot water is on at the same time, a lot of the time it will rob it through the coil so you can just daquer it down. So it's like a lock, it's like a lock shield, having a lock shield on a radiator valve. It's obviously a gate valve. So we'll put that on there, jet blue that up, and then just pick the bypass up off there, pipe that return in to that one, and then hot sword in. So I've only got the expansion vessels to do, PRVs, heating expansion vessels, and I'm going to cut a fill loop in on the cold, so it's just going to loop back around like that, and then that's all in then. Uh, I've still got the cold and stuff to tie in the bottom, but we are getting there. This is our potable, our wholesome vessel. These come with the cylinder. Um, obviously these need to be serviceable once a year so you don't put it anywhere stupid and also they want to be mounted vertically um, I don't know if it says that in the instructions but obviously there's a chance if you mount it horizontally or any other direction it can pick up Legionella so mount them vertically so you can still get to the Schroeder valve I'm actually going to put mine a little bit for me to do what I did it's going to go somewhere there I'll probably centre it across that wall space and then we're just going to pick up off the I can pick it up off here or off here because it's the right side of the check valve and that's the expansion vessel for the cylinder. We've also got a red expansion vessel to put in for the heating so we'll have a fill loop, uh, another pressure relief coming off that but that's separate, that's for the heating. That, that, the red one does the boiler, the white one does the unventing cylinder and they come with the cylinder. If you have got a secondary return, which we haven't, often you have to put a larger expansion vessel in but we don't have that problem on this, that should be fine. I always use clip spacings, you know, the pipe standoffs to hold the expansion vessels on because obviously the screw holes are a little bit big, but that's solid. Obviously, you need to fit these on a solid wall and they should really be hard pipe. We shouldn't really be using flexes. So all I'm going to do is bend out across. We'll try and do that all in one bend if we can. I don't know. I'm probably not that good, but at least it's easy to get to. You can get to the Schrader valve on the top. It's out of the way as well. It's in vertical position and it should never really cause a problem. Right, pipe that expansion vessel in like that in the end. I think it looks neat enough. So if you ever want to drain that expansion vessel, obviously turn the water off, open the hot tap, and you can just pump it out. And it'll pump out the cylinder, and that'll be fine. Next one is heating vessel. I'll try and line that up if I can. Obviously, I'm going to cut a fill loop in so it hangs round. That's the cold. Uh, which one's my return? That one's there, my return. So I'll put the check valve on the cold side, and it'll just hang round, and it's nice and easy to fill. And obviously the vessel up there somewhere that's the plan most of the pipe work is in now obviously i've still got to lag all this ton dishes i've got to do and obviously condense and oil line but yeah that'll probably be a job for another day if i can just get the vessel done fill loop on i'll be fairly happy today right that's the fill loop in um double check valve one on the cold side other one on the heating side you can drain down through there the reason we've got a random drain off tap in there now is because i've got the wrong pipe I don't know, I just want thinking. You'd be able to drain the upstairs heating into the tundish, so it's not a bad thing. But you can drain it through there as well. But yeah, that's all done. Just got that expansion vessel's pipe in. Today, I'm going to call it a day. It's Friday. It's getting on a bit now as well. I didn't get the earliest of starts because I obviously had to pick the... That light is terrible. I had to pick the boiler and stuff up. So, yeah, I want on site early enough, really. Um, but we still got quite a bit done. All the boilers piped in. Primaries are all done. Hot sold on expansion vessels in, that'll be in. So yeah, it's looking 
Looking okay, we're getting there. Right, lemon discharge is all in. There's an argument, and it'd be interesting to know what you, how you guys do it, that this is wrong. This technically shouldn't be teed into there. Anything on the unvented discharge, a heating one should be completely separate. I've done it like that, just because obviously it was easy, and you see loads done like that. Obviously, when you size your D2 pipe work on your unvented, you don't take into account heating, heating vessels going into it as well. But from experience, it's, I've never seen one that's ever caused a problem. So these are, Within, well, that one's 350 mil, that one's 350 mil, and that one I think is 500 mil. Um, we've got obviously we've got a massive drop, and we've only got one knuckle bend on it, and then it goes straight out the wall. That's falling all the way across. I'll stand back a little bit so you can see we've got a good gravity fall on that. So I don't think that's ever going to cause a problem. I don't think that anybody will ever pick that up. My next job is literally just to lag all the pipes. So we'll crack on with that. Right, that's got the, this little job all sorted. Uh, I've been round and labelled up all my pipe work as well. I've only, unfortunately, I've only got hot water flow tape in the van, so I need to pick some cold up. Uh, I still need to put a clip-on thermometer on here. This cylinder needs to be kept at 60 degrees. So all I'll do is get one of them ones that strap around, which will be fine. I've made the best job of the lagging. There might be one or two bits I just need to sort. Sometimes you see bits as you go along. I've just tied that cold in temporarily. I've still got to put a shore stuff on this anyway but that's just temporarily tied back in just to give it some water back on. So yeah, we're pretty much there with the boiler. I've still got oil line and condense to do. So there's one or two bits to finish off, obviously all the wiring and stuff. But I think I'm gonna end the video there just because it's probably getting quite long. Um, I will be back on this job to obviously fill up, test, commission, set all the flow rate, flow temperatures and stuff like that up. But that probably won't be for a bit because we're sort of getting worked up on this one and the job's starting to pile up at all the places. So. Um, so yeah, if you've enjoyed this one, make sure you hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. And we'll see you all in the next one. It probably won't be back on the renovation for a bit, depending how it goes. Sometimes you, you don't always know. But yeah, um, might be a bit more of a job in video, but we'll try and keep it interesting. So yeah, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next.